to the Hometown Business Podcast. I am your guest. No, I'm not your guest. I'm your host, Autumn Dell. My guest here is Mr. Keith Kepner, and he is the owner of Kepner Boxing. Is that the whole name? Did I say that? Kepner Boxing Fitness and Kepner Boxing Franchises. Okay, awesome. Kepner Boxing and Fitness. He's located, uh, it, you've got a gym in Athens and Loganville, which I just found out about. Yeah. It is down there near Great Harvest Bread in the shopping center right beside Sonic. So if you if you are local, you'll have to go check him out. He said mm-hmm. um, a free, free first visit. Yeah, free session. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So you guys go check him out. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to have you on today. They yes. call you Coach Keith, right? That's how you addressed your or addressed yeah. yourself to me. So I've been called worse things, but yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, that is awesome. I'm excited to have you on because in his show note or in the notes when you know we were setting up the interview, you mentioned franchising and yeah. all the business and leadership, and I love talking about that stuff. And so I just kind of assumed that you had purchased a franchise and you were running it, but sure. no, you are the <laughs> starter and yeah. owner of the franchise. So I would love to hear how that how that came to be. Yeah, so really we started off as a sole proprietorship, essentially really my wife and I, or who would be my future wife at the time, and we continued to grow. We started in a small unit, then we expanded to a larger one, then to a larger one. And then it was funny, and kind of like 2017, 18, we started to kind of get depressed because it was like, well, what's the next stage of the business? How does it continue uh-huh. to grow? So we started kind of looking for different avenues, looked at maybe expanding with corporate locations, uh, looked at franchising, and I really liked franchising for a couple reasons. One is it's a, it's a very well-regulated business, and so that's good for me because it means everyone competes on more of an even, even playing field. Mm-hmm. There's not like mischievous stuff, so it's a very straightforward uh, you know, business sector. And then also it's not as cash intensive as a corporate location. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you also get to, so like over the time of growing a business, I've started coaching people that own like martial arts facilities or fitness facilities, help them have more success with their business. So I get to take that passion for that, plug it into our franchise. I get to take my passion for boxing, plug it into the franchise. So it's a win-win. Yeah. And at least with my experience being someone who I'm a high school dropout. I don't have any, you know, education really besides self-education. Is um, whenever I start to deviate from my one thing, which is my business, things start to mess up. So it's a perfect way for me to continue to do more things with it, but still in that line right. of what I know works. Yeah. So like you're totally scratching that itch of like most entrepreneurs have it of like I want more. Mm-hmm. Like now what? I didn't start this business just to not have to work. But once you get all the <laughs> systems in, you're like, well, now what? Yeah, um, exactly. So that is totally cool. Who did you turn to or where did you turn? That's a fabulous question. To learn about this stuff. Yeah, with the franchise aspect. So mm-hmm. first off, there's a great book that was kind of our introduction to the concept. I think it's called like Franchise My Business. I, uh, there's like only two or three books out there on it. Uh-huh. And so it's one has pictures of little airplanes on it, like little paper airplanes. It's a really, really, really good book. It gives you a full concept of like, why you shouldn't and why you should and everything else. But then when it actually came to rubber hits the road doing it, there's a lot of pitfalls that people can fall into. Uh, I know people that have spent $200,000 to franchise their business. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, all they're left with is like an FDD and manual. And we got all that done for under 20,000. Uh, So we partnered with a great company, FMS. They're actually in Alpharetta, Mm -hmm. uh, but of course they do work nationally. And, uh, Excellent company. They assisted through the process of creating our legal documentation, uh, expanding our manuals. Because what we had done, kind of what I think you just touched on, is as a business owner, sole proprietor, we had built out our systems Mm -hmm. to an extent where it's like, well, we kind of have the makings of a franchise, right? Right. Uh, But once you have that, then there's the whole actual procedure of how you actually do that for a franchise. And so they helped with all of that. And uh, yeah, so we officially became a franchise August 2020. Okay. Yep. That's awesome. So how's it going? How many locations? So yeah, we uh, we have our corporate in Athens. We've sold two. Mm-hmm. We've opened one in Loganville, and that's uh, Lee and Whitney Anderson are the franchisees for that. They're the owners of, of that location. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we have a franchise slash license licensing deal in Hartwell that we'll be launching in a couple months. And hopefully next will be we have a letter of intent for New York and uh, Rochester, and then hopefully. Hopefully Tennessee. Tennessee's looking very hot, so okay. hopefully signing something there soon. That's awesome. So what does it look like your job role now? Like yeah. what does that look like on a daily basis? Yeah, so that that primarily uh, it's 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 wide open there because I also 
manage the front end of the franchise, meaning that I'm doing a lot of phone calls and meetings with prospects, mm -hmm. uh, reaching out to different people and developing those relationships because it's a longer term sale, a franchise mm -hmm. sale is. Legally, it can't be any more than or less than two weeks legally okay. uh, from providing the FDD document. Uh, but it's it's a relationship business and it's something as well that you know I'm sure you can figure is it's like you have to have a more highly qualified person because uh -huh. uh, it's a higher investment. And so yeah, so I spent a lot of time with that. Uh, and then a lot of time, frankly, on the back end, continuing my wife and I to build out the systems and, and you know, we're testing things. We're always making sure everything's as streamlined as possible, but also as thorough as possible to make it as easy as possible for a franchise partner right. to have success. Yeah. So we've taken the experience just from opening up Loganville of <laughs> plugging that into our systems. Okay, what didn't work? Okay, fix it, you right. know, that type of thing. Yeah, that's awesome. So how, how did it come, like when you opened your first location and it was just you guys and you're putting in those systems, how did you figure out the systems? Did you have a coach or- you That's a great question, that's a great question. So uh, I tell you, initially, I, cause I always thought, I, my, you know, my father was a clinical psychologist and he had a, a very successful practice, but he was a sole proprietor, you know, golden handcuffs type person. Mm -hmm. Couldn't take a vacation for, you know, a couple weeks because he'd lose half his business. Right. Um, so that's the only thing I knew how to run and knew how to do. And then I became exposed to the concept of, you know, systematizing your business and actually having a business mm -hmm. versus a job. And we started that path. I brought in a couple people to help systematize the business. The trouble with that was that maybe they weren't the most qualified person to do so, or they didn't necessarily have a successful business mm -hmm. so it just didn't really help right. uh, so it really became a process of just trial and error um, doing a lot of reading you know I'm mm -hmm. a big reader of books and uh, nothing nothing really like super quick uh, hack on that it was just a process of testing testing and I would say one thing for us that was very important to us and I think was very helpful was unlike a lot of people what I see them do is they'll, they'll plug in systems and then they'll pull out mm -hmm. really fast and really hard and then the business falls apart. Right. Versus we just like inch by inch started pulling out. And frankly, us having our daughter who's four and a half now, that's when my wife had a reason to start pulling out of physically being in the business. Right. And then it took me a couple of years to finally be, okay, I need to physically pull out of being a coach of the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, so it's just, it was just trial and error over time and you know, testing and and fixing what didn't work. Yeah, <laughs> I am super impressed when people figure all that stuff out because I know like these systems, they're not necessarily, I have a coach and he is specific for cleaning companies, mm. which it sounds kind of like what you do yeah. for. Fitness um, and, yeah, martial yeah, arts. Yeah, because he's great because he's been there. He knows what works and um, you know, our group, we come up with the systems and stuff, but it's like stuff, that I'm like, oh my, I never would have thought of. Actually, you know what though? You're making me think of it. You know Sam Walton, right? Nope. Okay, the guy that founded Walmart. Oh, right? okay. So how he built that store to be so successful, he and actually the people who started Home Depot, they both borrowed a lot from a guy named Sol Price, mm -hmm. who had a, a discount store in California. And then also Sam would go across, you know, state borders and whatever, whatnot overnight to check out other discount, discount stores, take their best practices, et cetera, et cetera. They would have to kick him out of stores because he'd have a yellow notepad taking notes. Uh -huh. That's what I did yeah. uh, because before we actually became a franchise, as we were really streamlining our business and building out systems, I went secret shopped all the other franchises, yeah. Orange Theory, Nine Round, everything. And I just wanted to see what worked. And right. then I was fortunate enough to actually have a couple friends that managed some different uh, boutique fitness locations. Mm -hmm. So I was able to be like, hey, show me some of your stuff. And so I got some of that stuff and I was like, oh, that's how you do that. So yeah. really, I would say, yeah, a little bit of borrowing, which is what all great artists do is right. they borrow, right? Yeah, well, because who, ha like, back in the day when our parents started businesses, they were truly just doing it because they wanted to work for themselves. That's right. But, like, now, I, when I start a business, I want it to fund financially the next business. That's right. Or, um, you know, like, build wealth in the long term, but I don't necessarily want to be in my instance, cleaning all the time, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. I just won't be able to do that forever. And so the only way to be able to do that in, in the span of a lifetime is to take from other people's mistakes. Oh, I'll have yeah. 10 years to 
you know, get this thing rolling. I want it rolling quicker. And and to me, one of the key points was many times I've gotten sidetracked by copying theoretical things, mm -hmm. taking actual things that you see are proven in the marketplace and plugging that in, way different ballpark. Yeah. So that's just kind of uh, something that's really helped is the more that I go into that world of what's actually working versus what could work uh -huh. is a total game changer. What are me. some of the systems you think of when you... We think of that. Um, fluffy, we'll like talk about leadership and management, like kind of fluffy leadership and management ideas versus what that actually looks like right. in action. Yeah. Like step one, two, three. Yeah. Because you can, you know, don't worry, I read a lot of books on a lot of things, but you can read a lot of books and some of these leadership books or business books or whatever. It's a lot of mindset stuff, which is important, but it's only that, and you don't know, okay, I got a great mindset, now right. what's step one, two, three? Yeah, like I can envision this great yeah. business, but what am I actually gonna do? Exactly, That's and good. so that we're finding a coach in the industry or finding, um, it's one of those things like when the student is ready to teach or appear, so that's where I've been blessed that like in 2015 when we really started to kind of scale up the business a little bit by little bit, mm -hmm. um, I had someone come into my life just by chance who ended up, you know, essentially becoming a mentor of mine in a sense. And then uh, same thing when we launched the franchise, our first franchise expo, I got to meet a guy that was number three at one of the largest fitness franchises and he took them from 40 to 500 locations. Uh, and he's my close friend now and he's helping us out so much. That's awesome. Seeing around corners and everything. Yeah, great. that's awesome. That's so helpful, the networking with mm -hmm. people who have done it. Um, in my group are in my coaching group are companies who you know like my team is about six um, they're up to 15 or 20 and I love being able to look at what's coming like what they need to put in place yeah. therefore I know what will need to be put in place um, and also it makes you a biz better business owner yeah absolutely when you're telling someone to do something it helps you reevaluate it for yourself um, one individual that I help with his personal training practice uh, when I was calling him out on some things that he needed to focus on, it just flipped it on me. I was like, oh, wow, like I actually need to do that in this other area. Right. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so like you seem somebody, like somebody who is super into leadership. What do you what do you do? How involved, I guess, are you with your team yeah. at the Athens? Like so with the Athens location, you know, we just, I only spend about five to 10 hours a week working on the business, mm -hmm. not necessarily in it, but I communicate with our team lead who is essentially almost basically our manager at this point uh -huh. and our head coach. So I'm making sure that I, I touch, meet with them about 15 minutes minimum, two times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I physically go in there to take a session here and there, yeah. uh, but that's about the most of it. I, 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 I try to reach out, and I do because I care about them, reach out to the different staff members, team members, just to, you know, touch base with them right. and get connected with them as human beings. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that, that's really about it. But as leadership goes, what it is that I've experienced is that setting the pace and then once that pace is set, then whoever comes behind you, like team lead, head coach, they keep that pace. Mm -hmm. And then whenever you are around, you're continually setting that pace. Um, but it's interesting changing that from being more of an advisory role to them versus the person that actually has to physically almost model mm -hmm. what is supposed to happen. Yeah. So I've modeled it for years. They both got to see that. And uh, that's what has made leadership easy. Yeah. But now it's a, almost like a coach relationship with them. Right. So. And like stepping back and letting them be smart. You know, like sometimes yes. if you treat people like they're dumb, they're going to be dumb. Like, Precisely. Why, why not? You know, you must think I'm dumb. So I think I experienced that recently, even though I know it, it's like if you, you can enable somebody mm -hmm. and they're not, it's not because they want to be enabled. You literally forced enabling right. on them. Yeah. And you, you handicap them. So, yeah. You know. I love my team. Like they... They just figure it out. Last week we were at the lake and I my phone was up, not by the lake, and I would go um, around one or two, eat lunch, and be like, um, some you know, like something came up. Sure. And so I'd check in with them, like, hey, did y'all get it dealt with? And they're like, Yeah, we're, we're good, we're fine. And it's like, y'all are totally capable, you really don't need me. And um, you know, keeping I'm the I love serving the team. I love being there just to be friends with them and um just let them know that they're valued yeah. and they're part of a culture. And I mean, they're the front to the business. They're who the client sees. Yep. And um, so I love that. I love Well, and that's where it's, it sounds like you've stepped around your ego. 
because that's oftentimes what gets people mm-hmm. messed up is it's a thing of like when I was running the business all the time and coaching everything, everyone's like, oh, this place is so great, Keith. Too bad it's just all because of you and, you know, it can't be successful otherwise. Right. And uh, so having that, obviously, it was true at that time because we're running these systems, mm-hmm. but and it makes you feel good because you're like, yeah, you know, because, you know, you're accomplishing something. Yeah. But yeah, you get your ego wrapped into that. And then when you try to step aside, your ego closet way, way back in. Yeah. Micromanaging and all this uh-huh. stuff. Because so. you're not there to answer all the questions. And that's what you've trained your team to do. Sometimes, like, don't tell my team this, but I'll purposely not answer their texts just because I want them to not think that I'm always yep. available. And, you know, they know I'm always there if they really needed me, but I also know that they're totally capable. Yeah. And I want them to know that, like, I trust you. And if I'm always there to answer all their questions and stoop in with my um, superhero cape, they'll assume, okay, then she must, that must be what she wants us to do. Well, it's something my wife taught me because you know, she's my business partner and I'll have this, this thing sometimes if it's like, Computers. I'm better with computers. I'm way better now, but I'll be like, where's this thing? Uh-huh. And it's like, she's like, just look for it. Like, <laughs> you know. My husband will do that. He'll come in. Uh, where's the pull bag? Have you even scanned it? <laughs> it's right there. My kids too. And I should probably transfer that and stop enabling them. Sure. Uh, right. <laughs> teach them to be self-sufficient. That's right. Easier with your business for some reason than your own family. Yeah. But yeah. Well, this is cool. I'm so excited to have somebody like talking business with. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So let me ask you this. What is, uh, so, so your kind of next step is possibly the franchise, right? To expand into that. Maybe. <laughs> right. Um, the something that is, good things to think about is have you, well, let me ask you this. Have you secret shopped a lot of places? Um, I mean, I follow cleaning companies like on Instagram. I, I haven't hired them, okay. <laughs> but, um, so no, I guess not. It's a good thing. So, uh-huh. I mean, it literally, cause if you don't know what's going on on the inside, you don't even know right. who you're fighting, right? Yeah. In a sense who your competition is. So it's like, for instance, in the franchise world, if I'm talking to a prospect and they're thinking between us and two other franchises that are in the same industry, uh, I can give them a very good coverage of what's going on, Mm -hmm. what's it like, even what's happened with that business as a franchise recently. Um, So it's very important because like, you know, the the enemy you don't know is worse than the enemy you know. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, so that's, it's helped out a lot, and that's where I literally dedicate it. I, reading Sam Walton's book, Made in America, inspired uh-huh. me. It's autobiography. It's brilliant because it's him writing it along with excerpts of people talking about Sam. So it's not just Sam's own ego trip about himself. Right. It's the people that worked with him and his competitors talking about him, too. Okay. And so it's very beautiful and inspiring. So that made me be like, oh, my God. Like, I, I need to do that if yeah. I want to grow it. And it just, it, it, it opened up the door so much for so many blind spots we had, uh, for so many things that we didn't even think about yet, or even people I know who had multiple locations just didn't think to tell us, mm-hmm. you know, or like, you know, you know what maybe sometimes is the information you need the most sometimes. Right. Um, and so a coach may tell you everything they think that you need to know at that time, but man, really you needed this. Yeah. And unless you're in it, you don't know. Okay. So bouncing off that, what's one thing you do wish you had known? Stepping into franchising? Mm-hmm. Um, I want, actually, the only thing, and it's an overall conceptual thing, is just keeping in mind, I knew this, but just like, I had to remind myself of this multiple times, that it is a slow game. Uh-huh. Like, you know, with running a business, you have this thing, it's like, and I, if you ask me, a year ago, when we became a franchise in August, like, you know, Keith, is this gonna be fast game or slow game? You're like, it's slow. But to actually understand what that means. Right. And that, like, to be okay with that. Uh, because naturally, I'm a sprinter, and the more I've learned to not be a sprinter, the better my life has been, the better our, our business has been, and everything else. Yeah. So, yeah, just realizing how long it takes to make deals happen, uh, how long it takes to just make anything happen, yeah. to not get uh, discouraged. And so just, you know, remembering those basic things. Yeah. 
That's good. You know, it's not about how you start, but it's about how you finish. Right. So we yeah. can all start with trumpets. There's something called an arumbashur. That's that's Sanskrit for you start off with trumpets and a big fanfare, and you're like, look at me, I'm gonna rule the world, uh -huh. and then you creep out the back door. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm more of a slow paced person. I like to, Serves which me. as a business owner, sometimes I have to check my mindset with this and let it go. But I like to be in control mm. and or not even be in control. I just like things to be controlled. Yes. Um, and so sometimes when I think like, gosh, I should be growing faster than this. I'm like, nope, you are growing at a good pace because mm. you're catching things. You're building a solid system, a solid um company there's a real fine dance mm -hmm. because like let me give you in, in the gym space okay. okay so you have acquisition and retention uh -huh. okay right the same thing with any business yeah. right um i know people i've worked with people i've helped people who they are phenomenal at retention mm -hmm. like they're better than me at retention they're amazing but their acquisition is, is, is so shoddy and right. poor. And they almost think that their key to having a successful business is retention, where like, you know, it's a combination right. of two. And so that's where I'll see those types of people sometimes struggle because, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're really conserving things and they're really keeping what they got, but they're not growing. Right. Then you have the opposite, the converse. And so that's where fortunately I lean on that side of acquisition. Uh, my wife leads more on uh, keeping things together. Yeah. And that's really served us together and brought me more to the middle and more towards this way. Because like the way she would have a business, she never wanted to own a gym. Uh, she managed a gym for nine years. People were like, you should, you should own your own gym. She said, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. But if she had a gym, it would run perfect. It would be pretty damn good, but it would not grow. Yeah. And if I had one, it would grow super fast and probably collapse in on itself. Right. Eventually. That's, that's so cool to hear. I'm definitely like your wife. Like I am the one who, I mean, we don't have a huge turnover rate, but where I struggle is going out and selling, you know, like it's yeah. just not something I'm naturally good at. It won't be my excuse. It is what I'm working on. That's right. Um, and because, let me tell you something like mindset wise, you know, this isn't true for everyone, but just overarching themes, what I've seen, I've, I've seen the opposite true, but typically like think about it, evolutionarily males, we're supposed to, we go out and hunt. We're supposed mm -hmm. to go out and, and wage a war, yeah. do something crazy. Women need to take care of the uh -huh. base. Cause you, if you don't take care of your base, you get overtaken yeah. and it's done. So that's where I've seen just as far as natural inclination, the male be more like, I'm going to run in my head to the wall. Uh -huh. And the female will be like, no, let's take care of everything. Let's yeah. take care of the wall. It's funny. I heard recently um, on another podcast, like the guys have tip stereotypically sure fight or flight and girls have tend and mend mm. and i'm like that because typically guys were created to fight each other yeah. women were created to have babies so if you have a bunch of babies you can't fight or flight yep. you got you know like and 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 create relationships too uh -huh. because as a woman uh you know typically especially back thousands of years ago you couldn't just go off into the woods and you know be fine. Right. Whereas a male, you could go off in the woods, find another tribe or whatever. As uh -huh. a woman, that's really dangerous for many reasons. Yeah. So yeah, it's just really interesting how that translates to life and to business. Right. And that's where I find that frankly, through our experience with team members, that women generally are phenomenal with details and crush guys with details and mm -hmm. being consistent on things. And guys tend to be a little bit better about like taking risks and right. you know jumping into the line of fire. Yeah, you know? that's awesome. So. I, it's super cool that you guys have each other and oh, it's so great. Uh, and it's been it's been a lot of it's been a lot of struggle. You uh -huh. know, I mean, a lot of arguments, a lot of um, us being annoyed at each other, and um, and frankly, almost it, what's been beautiful though is we've both been willing to see our faults mm -hmm. and both been willing to. Um, to grow yeah because if my wife wouldn't have been willing to grow her and i wouldn't have been able to stay together right and uh if i weren't willing to grow in certain areas i've had to it wouldn't have worked right so. that's awesome sounds like a really good match i mean it's the best of both worlds you know like with uh with a partner who y'all don't grow together constantly you leave and go home you know you have dinner with your spouse but not your partner you know you're having right. dinner with your spouse but at the same time you guys have more control over like where this thing goes, you know, you're not. Oh yeah. So that's oh, yeah. cool. And that's what's great with being a family business. Cause the reason I'm into boxing is because of my father also being a professional boxing coach. Uh -huh. And he actually wrapped my wife's hands for her first fight ever back in 06. And I did not meet her until 2011. Oh wow. Match.com. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's 
That's yeah. insane. She was out in Duluth area, Lawrenceville, and uh -huh. I was in Athens. And uh, yeah, I just happened to, we started talking on Match, and then it wasn't until we started dating that we figured out that my father wrapped her hands for one, her first fight. Yeah. crazy. How cool. What a <laughs> neat story. Um, I'm going to have to have you back on sometime. Yeah. Maybe with, you should get her to come. Yes. That would be absolutely. cool. I'd love to meet her. So, okay. Well, we are on to our lightning round. Let's do it. Um, and I had questions written, but then I was, after talking to you, cool. I wanted, Let's are you a podcast it. listener? Mm, YouTube listener. More. YouTube. Okay. What's your favorite <laughs> like? Ooh, that's a great question. I, I, I love, uh, I've really been into Brad Lee recently. Okay. I don't know if you know who that is. Nope. But he's the guy that found at Lightspeed, which is a online training platform that mm -hmm. all the gurus use. You know, if you know like Grant Cardone, Tony yeah. Robbins, people like that. All their programs are on Lightspeed. Okay. Brad founded that and he's also a very good salesperson. Uh -huh. I love his style, it's very smooth. Yeah. And so that's one, and then one that I was listening to last night, because I'm actually doing some research on leadership to help plug that into our training uh, portal, is Philosopher Notes by Brian Johnson. Okay. And what he does is um, the big ideas from books and everything else, and it's a very, I love he ties kind of the Greek philosophy and everything else into modern psychology. Okay. I'm going to have to share those in the yes. show notes. Look them up and watch them for myself, probably, too. It's excellent. Um, Favorite local restaurant? Like, do you and your wife go on date nights? Mm -hmm. um, yes, we do. Okay. Every other week. Um, awesome. Let's see. And I also want to tell you what is not. Okay. <laughs> but no, no, that's really bad. It's really bad. <laughs> uh, just because we had a really bad experience um, at a restaurant that we tried for the first time. It's been there for a long time. Uh, but anyway, um, I mean, that's really hard. We, we, yeah, we hit up a couple different spots, but like, Blind Pig okay. is a great place. Uh, they're actually a franchise too from okay. Athens. Uh, and Clocked Restaurant is great. Okay. Not a franchise. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's a big one. Oh, Cali and Tito's. Okay. You ever been there? Um, I don't think so. We. Oh, you gotta check it out. My husband, we try to do a date night once a month and we went to Athens, I don't know, sometime a few months ago, but I forget where we ended up eating. What type of restaurant was it? It was like on the college town. I was like, Ryan, we are too old to be out here. <laughs> it's all on college. It's like downtown, downtown, uh, downtown. Do you remember what type of food? No, I'm sorry. We did start there, but they, he didn't make a reservation. Uh, and it was a long wait. So we ended up, um, I don't remember the name, but it was a standalone place, like a nice sit down dinner. Uh, I don't even remember. You know what type of food? I ate red snapper. My husband probably ate steak. Was it on millage? Sure. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up now. I'll look it up and and share it. Must not been that good. No, no it was kidding. really good. I I enjoyed it. And but he drove and you just were all on the ride. Yeah, I didn't even pay attention. That was we tried to take turns like picking, and that was his turn to pick, and he was embarrassed because the first place that he picked. It was like a two hour wait. So. That's honest. That's honestly kept us away from like, we've, my wife has eaten at Last Resort Grill, if you know what that is, uh -huh. like one time. I've eaten it there like maybe two times in my life just because uh -huh. of, you know, having reservations or yeah. you know, just the wait. That yeah. Day. If you remember to do it, it's great, but <laughs> we don't remember to do those things. So, yep. awesome. All right. So, where can people find you online? So, kevinboxing.com, be a great place. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, LinkedIn, find me on LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All the spots like that. Uh, we have a YouTube channel for Kepner Boxing, as far as the boxing end, that's fairly popular. Okay. And so that's a great one for anyone that's kind of interested in boxing techniques. Yeah. Uh, and then we're kind of starting to build up a little bit of the franchise page, just, you know, kind of just out of happenstance. Yeah. Yeah. I'll share all that in the yeah. show notes so people can check, them, check you guys out. Um, so, you guys, remember. Go show them some love on yes. Instagram, Facebook, social, all the things. Um, get get his SEO going. I'm sure he already is. You have YouTube. Yep. SEO loves YouTube. So. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for being thank on you, and for being a guest. This was cool. And y'all go. I'm going to go check out um, Kepner Boxing in Logan. Logan My husband yeah. loves that. Um, so awesome. Thank you guys so much. And we will see you next week. Bye. This episode is sponsored by Get It Together Cleaning Services. We give you back your free time by taking cleaning off your to-do list. You can find us online at www.gitcleaning.com or message us on Facebook. Our handle there is at GIT Cleaning. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this interview and want to see more, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We have more great interviews lined up in the coming weeks.